This is breaking news from RTV6, working for you. We are following breaking news this midday from downtown. A car goes off the fourth floor of a parking garage this morning, and now two people are dead. We have got a lot of questions right now, and RTV6's Kelsey Anderson is live downtown, working to find out exactly what happened. Kelsey, you're there at the scene. What can you tell us? Well, Meredith, like you said, right now we have so many questions. We have more questions than we have answers right now because, as you can see, it's still a very active scene. So we haven't had time to uh, talk to law enforcement officials about what exactly happened here. But what we know right now is a car did fall from the fourth floor of this parking garage you see right here. And we know that two people are dead. Now, we don't know if those two people right now, we don't know if they were in that car or in this alleyway. But uh, so, like I said, a lot of un unanswered questions. But we we do know that there was a lot of people inside the city market. So this is right behind the city market. And we actually talked to a manager of one of the restaurants in there. And he says it was a very, very loud and very scary moment. Take a listen. Luckily for us, uh, uh, you know, I, I had to count my blessings here. Um, me and my crew, we had already gotten our delivery for the morning um, a lot earlier today. so. Uh, we were basically just ready to open up for business and, and, and get the day going. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's we were all pretty shaken up. Yeah. And so that car was upside down, and that's what's taking crews so long to get it out of this alleyway is because it's just a mess back there, we can assume. And we want to let you know to avoid Delaware Street. If we can take a look this way, there are a lot of fire trucks here, a lot of uh, emergency personnel. So this is a very busy area right now. Please avoid this area if you can. Uh, we've got the video for you online. So just avoid this area right here. You do not need to come over here and check out this scene. So just stay away from Delaware Street, room between um, uh, Market Street and Ohio Street. So just avoid this area if you can. For now, I will send it back to you guys in the studio. Kelsey, thank you. We continue our live team coverage with Call 6 Investigate Chief Investigator Rafael Sanchez. He is at the live desk with more information on this fatal crash. Rafael, what have you learned? Meredith, good afternoon. We continue to monitor what's happening in the downtown area as Kelsey Anderson brings us those live pictures. This drone video just into the RTV6 newsroom from the scene. I spoke to a veteran law enforcement official who says the department has not seen anything like this before. Remember, our downtown is built with numerous parking garages to support the thousands of workers who come in every day as well as the visitors who are in and out of the capital city every day. So this situation could be a first for many of those that are now investigating what is happening right there. Let me tell you about the investigation and what's going to happen next and what's happening right now. The Indianapolis Fire Department is currently leading this investigation because they oversee when there's a structural damage to a building. This of accident this is what they do this is their expertise metro police already has a crash investigators team on the scene they will determine what happened based on the evidence collected now if this is not ruled accidental and if, there, if there's something suspicious in this situation then homicide investigators will step in and take over the investigation that is the process that will uh, go on for the next couple of hours we'll see what happens as those investigators with the crash unit are there right now collecting evidence now there could also be surveillance video of this situation since, as you know, most parking garages, as a matter of security and for the safety of their customers, they're packed with cameras. We don't know whether or not there were cameras on that floor, but that is possible. should also point out that I spoke to one investigative source close to the scene who tells me that initially, at this point, at this hour, that the vehicle appears to have backed into a pole, then went into reverse, going through that wall. We'll keep on top of this situation throughout the day and bring you the very latest on the RTV6 app, the IndyTel.com, and of course here on RTV6. Meredith, that is the latest from the live desk. Rafael, thank you. Many questions still to be answered. A woman who used to work for Attorney General Curtis Hill is among those testifying on the third day of his disciplinary hearing. Kathleen Bowers was a victim advocate in Elkhart County while Hill was that county's prosecutor. She testified that Hill repeatedly propositioned her first in an effort to get her in her own words to dance for him and he later asked her for sex the state's disciplinary commission is trying to show that Hill had a pattern of inappropriate behavior around women before he was accused of touching a state lawmaker and three legislative aides at a party last year 
Moments ago, Curtis Hill was called to the witness stand to testify. He is expected to face extensive questioning. Our political reporter Matt McKinney is inside the state Supreme Court hearing room right now covering Hill's testimony. You can follow him online to see what he says as it is happening. We also have complete coverage at the IndyChannel.com. A Center Grove PTO member is accused of taking money from the organization's account. Jennifer Dobbins is charged with mister, misdemeanor conversion. Court records show Dobbins used an ATM card to withdraw $1,400 from the North Grove Elementary PTO account. PTOs are parent-teacher organizations that aim to support schools and students. Prosecutors say Dobbins admitted to taking the money, but she has not been arrested she has, however, received a summons to appear in court. A hearing is scheduled for next month. Her attorney declined to comment. We're learning more about a new effort in Indianapolis to fight crime. Mayor Joe Hogsett and IMPD Police Chief Brian Roach joined community leaders just about an hour ago to announce Business Link Indy. The program is being called B-Link for short. It will connect IMPD with security camera systems owned by businesses and homeowners across the city. Linking this camera network together will help IMPD investigate crime. Police in the UK have launched a murder investigation after 39 people were found dead inside the container of a truck. The truck was discovered earlier today in Essex, just east of London. Investigators believe the truck came from Bulgaria. The truck's driver is from Northern Ireland and was arrested at the scene. Police suspect it was part of a human trafficking operation. Right now, officers are looking to identify the victims. Now to Washington, where a top defense official who oversaw Ukraine policy will be speaking to lawmakers on Capitol Hill. This as reaction continues to pour in following Tuesday's testimony from the top U.S. diplomat in Ukraine, who told Congress he believed it was, quote, crazy to withhold aid to the country until leaders agreed to open an investigation into the 2016 election, as well as former Vice President Joe Biden and his son Hunter. ABC's Rachel Scott is in Washington with more. Hours after yesterday's explosive testimony, another key witness in the impeachment probe arrives on Capitol Hill to testify behind closed doors. Defense official Laura Cooper, who oversees Ukraine policy. But it was yesterday's testimony by the top U.S. diplomat in Ukraine, Bill Taylor, that has left many in Washington shocked and has put the president on defense this morning. President Trump tweeting, neither Taylor or any other witness has provided testimony that the Ukrainians were aware that military aid was being withheld, adding, you can't have a quid pro quo with no quo. According to the prepared remarks behind closed doors, Taylor, a West Point graduate and Vietnam veteran, walked lawmakers through eight separate instances where he says he was told the president demanded pressure to be put on Ukraine to investigate 2016 election interference and the Bidens. Democrats say they are alarmed by what they heard. This is the, my most disturbing day in Congress so far. Very troubling. It was very damning for the president. Taylor says the U.S. ambassador to the EU, Gordon Sunland, told him the president wanted Ukraine to announce a public investigation into Joe Biden and his family. Any military aid would be dependent on that announcement. According to Taylor, the secretaries of defense and state, the CIA director, and the national security advisor sought a joint meeting with the president to convince him to release the hold on the aid. But that meeting never happened. And President Trump is also taking heed for describing what he is suffering from with this impeachment probe as a lynching, a term that holds violent racial overtones in our country's history, some coming to the president's defense, but lawmakers on both sides calling out his word choice. Rachel Scott, ABC News, Washington. The Indiana Department of Correction is looking to hire Hoosiers. Next on the News at Noon, the job openings the agency has right now and how you can apply for them. And the Steward Speaker Series is back for yet another year, and they're bringing some big names to the Circle City. We've got the details on this year's theme and who will be speaking. Alyssa. And we started a little chilly this morning, but those temperatures are climbing. Right now, we're in the 50s, and we're still climbing as we head into the afternoon. This is going to be our best weather day in the forecast. Some rain showers in the seven-day. I'll d break down all the details coming up. New Single Parents, ABC Tonight. 
Hiring Hoosiers is focused on finding good jobs for good people and to give you a heads up as to who is hiring. And one agency looking for good people right now is the Indiana Department of Corrections. Dave Burston is with the department and here to talk all about how you might be able to help them. Dave, thanks so much for joining me. Meredith, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So how many positions do you have open and is there a wide variety of positions available? We have quite a few positions available. Primarily, we're looking for correctional officers. That's statewide, and we have a lot of need for correctional officers in the Pendleton area. We have three facilities there, and also uh, out in the, the Plainfield area and Putnamville. Uh, so those positions are there, and we also have maintenance positions. A lot of people just think correctional officers, and that's it. We have correctional, maintenance, support staff. Uh, so there are literally dozens of openings, and we would encourage interested people to apply. Yeah, now some people might hear Department of Corrections and think that's an awfully intimid yeah. intimidating place to work for. Can you tell us a little bit about what these jobs would be like for these people and is, sure. it, is it an intimidating job? Uh, it's as intimidating as a person wants to let it be. Uh, anybody that comes in to become a correctional officer, they go through training. They're taught the things that they need to, to know to keep it safe for themselves mm -hmm. and safe for others. Uh, you're dealing just as you would expect. You're in a uh, prison facility. Right. So you're dealing there with the offenders that are there to make sure they're safe, to make sure they follow the directions they're supposed to do, as well as keep things safe for you and your fellow coworkers. Okay. What requirements does someone need to have if they're interested? in any of these positions? Well, primarily, they need to be age 18 and over. Uh, they need to have uh, a pretty clean criminal history. We're, we're not going to be able to hire somebody <laughs> right. with, with a felony record. Uh, and, and an interest in, in helping people because it goes beyond. A lot of people think when they think Department of Correction, mm -hmm. they think, people are locked up and put away and they're left there. Right. That's not the case. More than 90% of the people serving time are going to come back out into society. We want to help provide those people training and information, career opportunity training while they are in prison mm -hmm. so when they come out they can be successful and get out and stay out, which 30 of 34% uh, of the people that get out, uh, we have a recidivism rate of just 34%. So that, that's outstanding. So it's a job where you can really, really make a difference. And yes. we have the website below at the bottom of our screen where you can find out all that information plus applications and any other questions you might have. Dave, thanks so much for joining me this afternoon. We'll be right back after this break. Thank you. 800-888-88. We are taking a live look right now at downtown A View to the west. There doesn't seem to be a cloud in the sky right, right now, now, Alyssa. We have a beautiful day today. We've really lucked out. This is going to be our best weather day. We are going to see a little bit of cloud coverage to the north as we head into the afternoon. But for the most part, really a gorgeous day on tap. Temperatures right now in the 50s. It's 57 degrees in Indianapolis, 55 in Greenfield, 57 in Crawfordsville. So we have a beautiful noon hour and we're going to continue that climb as we head into the afternoon. We'll be right around 65 degrees today with mostly sunny skies. A little breezy today as well. Those winds sustained out of the south southwest west about 10 to 15 miles per hour and then we are seeing some gusty winds still those wind gusts as we head into the afternoon going to be close to about 25 miles per hour with some areas seeing those wind gusts close to 35 miles per hour overnight now right now what's going on is we do have those clear skies but to the north of us we have this cold front starting to approach and that's just bringing us a little bit of cloud coverage for those northern counties so we'll see just a little bit of clouds as we head into the afternoon for the most part though today high pressure has been in control that cold front is going to continue to pass through throughout the day tomorrow. Not going to bring us any precipitation, though. What it is going to bring is just a little bit of cloud coverage. And then we are going to see some cooler temperatures by Friday behind that. But next, we also have this low pressure system developing to the southwest. That's going to start to push across the area by Thursday late in the night and into Friday. That will bring us a chance of some showers. And then we'll continue to see the potential of rain as we head into the weekend. We're looking at the potential for 
up to an inch of rain over Saturday and Sunday. Just a small chance each day, though, so we'll see plenty of uh, nice conditions as well out there. 60 degrees on Saturday, 64 on Sunday. We are going to cool down on Friday, though, with those temperatures dropping into the mid-50s with that passing cold front. Behind this, we'll see some drier weather to start next week. So today, we're continuing to see those nice conditions. It's really going to be the best day to get outside with mostly sunny skies, high right around 65 degrees. Tomorrow morning, we'll start in the 40s once again, and then we're going to see a little bit more cloud coverage throughout your Thursday with that passing cold front. Temperatures will be in the low 60s, and then we are going to cool down by Friday morning. Those temperatures in the low 40s, highs only into the mid 50s with those chances of showers, which will continue into Saturday and Sunday when those temperatures start to stabilize. We're back into the low 60s on Monday with plenty of sunshine for next week. Alyssa, thank you. Stewart Speakers has brought a number of big names to Indianapolis over the years from Magic Johnson to Felicia Rashad, and this year is no exception. Next week, Stewart Speakers has a special panel discussion called My Vision, My Power. And here to talk all about it is the man himself, the president of the Steward Speakers, Matthew Stewart. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Mary. So let's talk a little bit about this panel discussion and who you're hoping to reach with this. Yeah, so we're willing to, we're trying to reach the Indianapolis community, a cross section from uh, six people in sixth grade all the way to adulthood. So uh, it's really wide open. We have a 25 year old panelist and a panelist that's 60 years old. Okay, and these are some big names. Can you tell us who will be joining you that that evening? Absolutely. So Roland Martin, national journalist, will be the moderator for the panel. We have Dr. George Frazier, who is a national economic networking expert. He is phenomenal. We have Lauren Simmons, who's a 25-year-old stockbroker currently wow. on the New York Stock Exchange. And she's the youngest person ever to be on the New York Stock Exchange. We have a couple local people, also uh, influencers on the panel. Norma Muhammad and uh, Adrian Slash is on the panel. And then we finally, we have uh, Reverend Run. He had a television mm -hmm. show. He's an ordained minister, just a, a rapper, a phenomenal individual that helps uh, create thought. Yeah, so some really inspiring people. And is that what you hope people walk away from this series with some inspiration and some motivation? Yes, absolutely. Uh, this is an opportunity for uh, these thought leaders to come in here to Indianapolis and talk to us. But but also we have a question and answer period. So it's a chance to, for the Indianapolis community to engage with these speakers. And so as they go across the country to Chicago or New York, they also have the opportunity to share what we're doing here in Indianapolis. Just amazing. Where can people find out more information? Yeah, stewardspeakers.org, stewardspeakers.org or our office number 317-297-2905. Sounds like a fantastic event. Thank yes. you so much. We will be right back after this commercial break. To make a difference. We're continuing to follow breaking news from downtown. Two people are dead after a car fell out of the Market Square Center garage. Our Kelsey Anderson is live at the scene. Kelsey, have you learned anything more since we last spoke with you? Meredith, we have not heard from any law enforcement officials, but as you can see behind me, it is still an active scene. They are still working to get that truck onto the um, to the tow truck here. Um, and again, like you said, what we know right now is two people are dead, and that car did come off of the fourth floor here. We know that it landed upside down, so uh, crews had to work to get that that car flipped over, and now they're working to get it onto the wrecker. So again, this is an area that we want to avoid right now. Delaware Street right here in between Market and Ohio is very very busy, uh, a lot of law enforcement officials, a lot of fire trucks, emergency personnel, also a lot of people just down here at the city market. We do know um, that as of right now, no one inside the city market who works in the city market was injured, but we do know that that's where they load. So they're all feeling very lucky today that no one was there either accepting or uh, receiving a delivery or anything like that. But for now, I'll send it back to you, Meredith. And we are going to continue to see a beautiful day. You saw it's a little bit windy outside. We're seeing those gusts 25 to 30 miles per hour this afternoon. 65 degrees for the high, though. Mostly sunny skies. This is the day to get outside. Tomorrow we'll see a little bit more cloud coverage. Those temperatures in the low 60s before we drop off a little bit more by Friday. We'll only hit the upper 50s by Friday afternoon. A chance of showers by Friday as well. And then we'll continue to see a chance of showers both Saturday and Sunday this weekend before we completely see that clear out by the weekend. 
weekend. Alyssa, thank you, and thank you for making RTV6 your choice for news. Stick with us the rest of the day as we learn new updates on that situation downtown. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.